I guess if you converted a Lada into a motorbike, this is what it would be. Pretty slow. Hang on. You have a reflection in space, you can't see it. Okay, different light everywhere you go. Yeah. I'm ready to buy a motorbike. We need to put another on the Welcome back to the channel, it's John from Belly Russian and my son Josh and I were heading out today to look at some ATVs and snowmobiles as the as winter starts, this is not winter but as autumn is coming and we're thinking about winter and things that and getting around during winter time so we thought we'd have a look at some ATVs and some snowmobiles and things. Uh, something that we're not particularly um, familiar with as far as snowmobiles go, we've obviously had ATVs on our farm in Australia but we just want to see what's available here in Russia. Uh, see what brands are available, see whether that, um, you know, it's, it's the same things we could buy in Australia, things that we're familiar with, or other brands. Uh, we've seen uh, different Chinese brands that are available here, uh, which we get sometimes in Australia, but not so much. Um, you know, we, we're a lot more used to, to the big name brands like, you know, Yamahas and your Suzuki's and your Hondas, you know, well known brands with a good reputation. Um, but we're just going to go and have a look, see what's available, start doing some research for when we get the farm, being able to buy some good reliable equipment that we can use, even for taking out camping and things like that. So we thought we'd take you along with us so you can see what it's like here and we'll show you as we go around. All right, so Josh and I have made it to the shop that we wanted to come to to begin looking at some of the ATV and off-road gear they have here. Uh, we haven't found any uh, real spots that are like some of the spots we have in Australia. In Australia, if you want to go and look for motorbikes or ATV equipment or things like that, you would go, a lot of times they're all in a certain area and there'll be a dealership that will have multiple brands of bikes. Uh, here they seem to have, you'll have like a, it's a bit like an AT, a mall where you'll have all smaller shops in one area but but with a much smaller selection. We haven't found anything like a, a Cabela's or a say a Bass Pro they have in America. Um, you know where the, where the range is just off the charts, you know, where they're just so uh, impressive the amount of stuff they have in those shops. But here we are and we are seeing what we can find and we'll show you through all the things that we see here. So we've got some trailers here. Now these trailers look like they're specifically built for the big wheel ATVs that they sell here in Russia. Um, and so basically they would, they, they get the ramps, they drive up straight over the back of the trailer and then over the actual wheel arch and then sit right there. They also look like they have the advantage of with the drawbar, you can actually disconnect it and then you can stand the tractor up, stand your trailer up vertically to save space, which is interesting an option. What have we got? A hundred and forty-nine thousand rubles.
these boats look like they're predominantly set up for fishing more than say water sports or pleasure cruising So it's normally 570,000 rubles, but it's on special for 520,100 rubles. So aluminium, these are fiberglass hull, another aluminium hull. Storage. None of these brands I've seen before in Australia, but I presume they'd be a Russian built brand. They look really well constructed. Boarding already looks really good. Not a bad, if you're into boats. All right, I've got a few motorbikes out the front here. Racer. Doesn't, doesn't look like it doesn't say it doesn't look like a street racer maybe racer is the brand this looks like more of an agricultural style bike when i was growing up we used to have a, a yamaha ag uh 200 and uh thing was is really reliable what have we got ninety two thousand rubles Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Little off-road scrambler, race bike. Not a brand I've seen before. Don't know if it's Chinese or hard to say. Looks very functional for hunting around the bush. Lots of protection. How many cc is it? I'm trying to figure that out. One forty nine cubes. Now these big wheel quads. I haven't seen them. Russia's the only place I've seen these. Seat sweat. Yeah, no, you wouldn't want to sit on that. But uh, these things are obviously really good for moving through the moving through the swampy ground. But yeah, they'll float. They'll float in water. Let me look at the size of those tires. They're huge. They're a good two foot, 80 centimeters wide. Two and a half foot. It's pretty robust construction. It's like a small, you know, it's got the sort of size capacity construction as a small four wheel drive, but in a motorcycle format. Well, 
Automatic. I guess if you converted a Lada into a motorbike, this is what it would be. Two enclosed trailers. Two wheels. Aluminium. <laughs> what do you know? Alaska. A single axle. Galvanized. This is quite a common uh, trailer design here in Russia uh, with the canvas sort of covering. Got a frame, a frame you can see there, but um, I mean, I guess for the snow it's ideal. But uh, I would have expected more uh, of a hard, uh, like a shell, like a fiberglass shell, a bit more durable. Now this is a lot more like I expected. This is a lot more like an Australian style showroom. All your big name brands, your Skidoo's, Can-Am's. So these are kits you can fit to a, uh, you have to have a powerful enough motorbike, but you can fit to them and run your bike on snow. We've got one over here. I've only seen these on you know YouTube videos, but I actually sell them here. I'm sure they're a lot of fun in the snow. They've got quite a good selection of snowmobiles and quads. You see a lot of the Chinese ones here, the CTFs, I think they are, or C motos. But these are actually Can Ams. More of your utility, ideal for you know your farms, getting around on your farms. Although in Australia we only ever used utilities or what we call a ute in Australia. Um, four wheel drive utes got us pretty much anywhere we needed to go. Not only the land cruiser or patrol utes, but these are becoming more and more popular. Uh, you know, I see a lot of people using these now, particularly on on YouTube and different farms and things like that. More of a fun racing off-road one. So we've got the uh, quad, the track systems you can fit to your quads and your uh, other ATV vehicles here. We're running them through the snow. Lots of accessories for your equipment. All for kitting out your gear. Your rifle holders. Different packs. 
Yeah, quite a good range here. Got a cool tub for towing behind your ATVs, keeping your stuff out of the wind. Ah, yeah, so we've come up to the third floor of that same building, and they've got a big camping store. Well, big. They've got a camping store. Josh is a new friend. He's not talkative, but he's agreeable. We've been looking for some stores like this with camping gear. Camping is something we really enjoy doing. And once we sort of know for sure that we can stay in Russia, we can start investing in things like this. Great, that one's for minus 12. They all different ways. Indiana. Mm -hmm. Haven't heard of that one. Yeah, Tough yeah. material though. Yeah, it's, it's um, heavy duty. It's not canvas, but it's a like a ripstop fabric. Yeah, it's not definitely normal fabric style where you yeah. just hook it with a stick or something. So yeah. Okay. I mean, it's quite um, it's quite puffy too. You think it'd go lower than minus twelve? I guess if you had a uh, another a, put another liner on the inside, that would keep it even warmer. Or if you put it in a swag, that would be. Even better again. Yep. If we ever find bags here, <laughs> we might get important ourselves. Yeah. Start the Russian swag revolution. You might have to describe what a swag is later on, because <laughs> huh, yeah, most people don't even know. Yeah. Even Americans don't know what a swag is. Yeah. A swag is a canvas. A canvas bed set up which has a mattress on it, like that. It's like a little, not a tent because you can't lie in it, but you, but you can either have it set up. And I don't know, what, Americans have a different name for it. I don't know what it is. Bedroll. Yeah, bedroll, but a bedroll doesn't sort of set up like a little tent. Yeah, maybe you can um, post a picture in. Yeah, I'll put a picture of a swag. So this is another store that we came to uh, in the same building, but on a different floor. And this company uh, sells a completely different brand. Uh, these are a brand called Stells, and these are actually uh, built and assembled in Russia. Apparently, according to the sales guy, some of the parts come from Russia, from actually China, but everything else is built and assembled right here in Russia, which makes it really good for uh, availability of parts and servicing and getting everything done easily without having to wait. You know, if you have an odd part. Uh, that they need to bring in from uh, America or Canada because the other ones are constructed over there. Um, these are Russian brand. They uh, all come with a two-year warranty uh, and uh, are generally, from what we understand, a good quality machine. These ones here in front of me now, these two white ones, which look a little bit different, um, they're actually more, um, not, what would be the right word, um, sort of a workhorse style snowmobile. And the one just slightly to the left of me there, which only has a, a single track in front, uh, is very popular with uh, hunters and you know people who who hunt for a living in Russia uh, because of its maneuverability on the with a single front ski rather than the the double front ski. It makes it a lot more maneuverable when you're going through the forest and through narrow places. Uh, so it's very popular uh, with you know people who are involved with hunting sports and things like that. Uh, they also have, they're not the fastest machine, but they can tow a a lot of weight behind them. They're a, almost a, a snow tractor. Um, they uh, are also comfortable, you know, very wide. They've got wide foot rests, very comfortable for traveling long distances in the snow. Uh, they also have run dual tracks underneath them, uh, which makes them very wide, very stable, and uh, and give them good flotation through the snow.
the guy was also explaining to us that they'll do about between 40 and 50 uh, miles an hour through the snow so around 80 kilometers an hour through the snow which makes them ideal for you know traveling longer distances so you can you know pull out you can take them off your vehicle somewhere and then travel a long way into the forest at a, at a fairly reasonable rate uh, and not spend you know so much time actually just traveling but they are he reckons they're just an excellent vehicle for for carting things through the snow if you're dragging things through the snow or you know you're pulling a lot of uh, sleds along behind them it's a perfect vehicle for that and they they electric start they also pull start uh, so you've got a lot of options if if you know you do run into some kind of mechanical troubles they get them going these other ones over here uh on the left these are built by the same company a little bit more towards their sports range where these ones will do up to uh 110 kilometers an hour or 70 miles an hour so these things really uh get along very quickly uh more of a sportsmobile um you know the, the, and these higher end ones are all decked out with hand warmers and they've got all the ventings run so the warm air is running over your legs and things like that so it's it's much easier to stay warm on them um but yeah more of a a, a sports machine than a than a a tractor a snow tractor very comfortable um you know very very well designed to sit on very comfortable to sit on and uh apparently you they have ex exhibition days every now and again so we're going to try and find out where one is or when one is and go along and see if we can't you know give them a try out and and take them somewhere and and see how good they are just showing where all the, the hot air comes out all your you know power plugs and for keeping things charged up All right, guys, we made it home. I uh, hope you enjoyed coming along with us. We checked out the uh, what it's like here to buy ATVs and snowmobiles and things like that. Obviously, for us, you know, from Australia, <laughs> snowmobiles is not something that we've looked at before. And, you know, there's very few places in Australia you can actually ride a snowmobile. There's a few ski fields on the East Coast, but on the West Coast, there's basically nowhere. Um, so it was just interesting to see what is available here, uh, what options we have. Interesting to see the difference between the brands that are available here. I know for us in Australia, you know, brands like your Honda, uh, ATVs, your Suzuki, uh, and and those brands, but they're apparently quite hard to get hold of here in Russia. Whereas you can buy Polaris and uh, BRP, which is sort of a Canadian American companies. So interesting to see, we're gonna to have to do a little bit more research, continue to go along. One of the guys who's spoken to was talking about they have open days and you can take things for test drives and, and go out and check them out, which we'll probably look at uh once the weather turns and snow begins to fly and we'll be able to you know try them out in that environment interesting to see those big uh big wheel atvs they're quite an impressive vehicle um i don't know how much good they'd be on a farm environment but for like i said going through swamps and and getting through that sort of land that'd be perfect but yeah we hope you enjoyed coming along if you did give us a big thumbs up uh, consider supporting the channel uh, i've got links down below for that and uh, we look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care.